Okay, Jim, when when uh when the clock hits seven thirty, we are all set to go. So whenever uh, I got seven twenty nine count. Yep, seven twenty nine. So but Dan's okay. got it all, all set. Can anybody hear me? Me? Yes. I do. No. Okay. Hmm. Tony Town Planning Man. Commission, please come to order. George, would you lead us in the pledge of the flag, please? Would you all stand, please? I pledge allegiance. To the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, George. Roll call. I see ya. Holly, George, Barry, Judy, Jim. Looks like all members are present. I'd like to mention that this meeting is being televised virtually virtual meeting and is open to the public. The public is recommended or encouraged for comments. If you would like to participate, you can do so by dialing 1-800-309-2350 and the conference number is 237-7193. Thank you. Commission members should have received the draft minutes of, of June the 3rd, 2020. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Jim, I did notice one. If I recall, if the commission was the only people present, not the design uh, standard board. Very first line, design view review board. Okay. So that can be removed. Thank you. Is there either any other comments or corrections? If not, I'll enter train a motion for approval. Move the vote. Move to approve. Motion made by Barry. Look for a second. Second. Second by yeah. Jim. Jim. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those, all those in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye or thumbs up. I got Barry, I got George, I got Barry, I got Judy, I got everyone. Opposed, likewise. Motion carried. Thank you. Item on the agenda for tonight for action is the village, the beach crossing. Phase two, final subdivision sub construction drawings, and phase two, section one plaque. Request, request for a final approval. Uh, Jim, you want to touch base on this and then we can move on? Okay. So the construction drawings were uh, presented to you at your December, or I'm sorry, your February meeting. Uh, this will be the first time we've spoken about them as, as a group. But in the meantime, they've been going through the uh, review process, um, both here, CDM Smith, and also at the various county agencies. And we have received uh, letters from the vast majority of, of our review agencies um, for the construction drawings. Uh, the plats were submitted more recently. And um, while the approval on the construction drawings generally represents uh, that there aren't going to be any issues with the uh, the meat and bones of the plats. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, responses on the plats specifically at this point. Um, so 
I think that at this point, what we would be looking for would be a, a contingent approval. Um, since we, we are missing, we do have a couple holes in the checklist still, um, specifically on the plats. So we were trying to, uh, to give it as long as we possibly could uh, to keep things moving since we did have um, some delays related to the pandemic and, and haven't met for a while. So uh, that's kind of where we are at this point. Uh, looks like we do have some uh, a caller on the line also, but um, however you want to take it from here, Mr. Parker. As soon as you're finished, uh, we'll move to that person. Okay. Um, so if there is anybody who would like to speak uh, on the line, uh, please press star five and that will raise your hand. Um, and then we can, let's see. Okay, okay. let's see, uh, Mr. Thomas? Hmm. Hello. Let's see, I'm just unmuted. Mr. Thomas, you're unmuted if you'd like to speak. Is Mr. Thomas still? Um, I, I see him on the line. Um, he's not muted. He's not according to the screen here. If he's having difficult, maybe we can move on to another caller. Let's um. Yeah, maybe we should circle back in a minute or two. Okay. Let's see. I guess in the in the interim, are there any uh, comments from commission members? Or uh, again, this is the first time that you guys have discussed the uh, construction drawings or plats. I guess the the one part I noticed in your uh, report to us was about the twenty foot buffer next to bars. Um, can you? touch base a little bit on that. Is that all on Meach Crossing or part of that on the farm? Right. So there was some planting done on the uh, Brower farm adjacent and then on the lots that are either abutting that property line or there were um, a few that had a small um, open space strip between the back of the lots and the Brower farm. There was some landscaping added to those lots and um, so between the two, uh, between the trees on the Brower Farm and the um, landscaping added to those lots, I think it satisfied the 20-foot uh, buffer requirement, certainly in spirit, if nothing else. I guess I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Smith. Uh, in reference to that, the trees or the buffer that's on the property, the other property line, if down the road, say a year he decided to cut those trees down is that possible or because it's part of this agreement it has to stay regardless of who's the ownership 
The ones on the Meads Crossing will stay because they're part of the landscaping plan. The ones on the Brower Farm would be up to that property owner because they're not they're not subject to the site plan or the, the subdivision regulation. So then we would lose the 20 foot buffer if he would if he right if he chose to take down the trees then we would be left with basically one row of trees at those lots that are close to the farm okay so there's one row on the farm and then another row on the lots that are closest to the farm or behind those lots so, so in essence we have two rows yes okay mr smith you yes uh, thank you for the opportunity so i've started working with mr brower I, um, i'm having trouble hearing you could you move a bit closer to the mic is that better yes okay I, I started working with mr brower the winter before last as we were starting the development and the if you're familiar with our property and, and our common property the conference line, is in presentation mode there are far. two parties so in the conference it, in talking with him about it, he said, well, would you mind planting these up on top of the hill? And we did, we actually did most of that as a double row planting of almost 100 trees. And parts of it where we get away from his more intensive operations area, we, we do go to a single row, but we planted the trees there to really, that's the most effective screening. He was also more concerned about the dogs, cats, and, and people coming onto his property. And so we agreed that we, we will fence that property line using a good uh, um, livestock fence, which we, we've done elsewhere on the property um, to keep people from going into the woods from Meadowbrook. But uh, he was in favor of that. And then, and then again, we're putting anywhere where our lots abut the, um, the, his property then we're planting those at areas with a single row of, and it's in a landscape screening easement. So he's saying, I, I can't speak directly for him and I won't do that tonight, but my feeling is that he, uh, he's been very satisfied with, with that solution. All right, thank you for your comments. Barry, you had a question? Barry, I can't hear you, you have to mute. Sorry, I forgot to turn my mic on. Um, I guess my my concern is is um, it's I understand the agreement that you made with Mr. Breyer Bauer, but you know as Jim was saying earlier, if Mr. Breyer sells the property and the new property owner comes in and cuts down those trees, then you don't have the twenty foot buffer regardless if you have the fence or not. Um, I mean, how do you how do you fix that so there's a twenty foot buffer that has to stay? That's, I mean, that would be my question. Could that be in a form of an easement or something, or are we in the wrong, wrong page? Yeah, I, I don't Jay, think. Sorry. Go ahead. Steve. Yeah, I, I don't think I could ask that of Mr. Brower. Um, you know, he, it, we planted those on his property because that's where he wanted them. I, if somebody wanted to take those down in the future, it, it really is to benefit him. So you know, the purpose of that landscape buffer. So if he chose to take him down, I'm, I don't know why he would do that, but um, I, I, I don't think, I mean, y'all know farmers and I, I don't think he's gonna wanna enter into some sort of an agreement with anybody. George. This buffer was put there as a part of the plan in the very beginning. How can we change it along the way? Down the road. But it, and we haven't changed it, actually. You said later, though, it could be changed. Right. But, but the, the buffer didn't come up until Jim Thomas pointed it out in a, you know, well after our, our approval. So the buffer is not a real part of the program out there. I think the buffer the 20 foot buffer is required, right, Jim? Um that's correct. 
the conference yeah. presentation mode, there are three parties in the conference. All participants, All participants are now, are now muted. muted. Okay, back to the question, Jim. If you got the buff, the twenty foot is is the requirement, right? That's right. not something that we just approved. It is a requirement by our station. Um, the, the subdivision code speaks to there being a where there's um, an undeveloped property or a property of non-residential use abutting a residential subdivision that there's supposed to be a, a 20 foot uh, landscape buffer around the along that border so with the case of needs the the border that really kind of satisfies that criteria is along the brower farm so the border along the existing dwelling that's on um in the road next to the project is um is not subject to the border because it's residential against residential. So it's just where we've got the agricultural versus the residential. Um, in the first phase, we had um, along Crimson Avenue, it's residential to residential. Along the railroad tracks, basically, we had a big area of open space along much of that. And the portion of the property that was close to the railroad tracks and the general business property on the other side of the tracks was buffered by uh, Grant Street, row of trees and open space, and then the railroad tracks before you got to the commercial district. So there was essentially a, a buffer provided along that edge of the property. And along Angel Road now, of course, there's, uh, as you, as I noted in my report, there's um, landscaping along the Angel Road portion, which is also already an open space. So the only area really in question is the border with the Brower property. Okay. So and that, that was just put there to please him, wasn't it? That was not a part of the original plan. There was no buffer between the, the, the uh, area being developed and the farm. Uh, that's what that was required. What was that? I thought that was part of the requirement was a buffer. In the very beginning? Yes. Am I right? That that's been that is in the code. Um, okay. It has not been historically implemented. If you look around the city, I'm not aware of a residential subdivision that does have a permanently landscaped buffer where they are adjacent to a commercial property or something that's not in residential use. Okay, back to Mr. Smith. What would that do to, to put another row of trees or, or a the five foot to cover the five foot back on your property? Well, the I would be shorten each one of those lots by five feet, right? No, by what, what we show now is a 10 foot buffer. And if we go I'm to the, again, as far as sound, what we show now is a 10 foot buffer. If we go to 20, it, it really eats into the backyard on, on some of those lots. Um, it, yeah. So, it, uh, so if you would, if you would add that, another 10 feet to yours, what would that do to anyone that would like to put a deck or something on the back of those properties? Would it, that it, require an easement or is there still space for that? There, on, on, on several of the lots, there would not be space. And their backyard would essentially be a um, buffer. Okay. Okay. Barry? Yeah, are we allowed, Jay? Are we allowed to waive that requirement? I think we yeah, I mean, that. can you guys hear me? Yes, Jay. Thank I, you. I think the thing is, is that um, you know the easement requirement is to buffer both uses, um, obviously, as Jim talked about. And in this situation, you've tried to get the spirit of it by buffering the most um, 
difficult use, which is the farm use. And the, usually we don't have the option of going on to the other people's property to buffer. So this was something that was like an extra where we said, well, wait, we can go on their property and buffer their use. And um, I think that from what I heard Mr. Smith say is that the fence was also, you know, it's not typically part of the requirements at all, but this was the, the extra that made it happen. You all can certainly waive the requirements. As Jim said, most of the places don't have them. You know, facts are the facts is that we don't have an easement on the other person's property, so they could take the buffer down at some point in time. And if you require the whole buffer on our property, you know what you're asking for, because when the property owners come in, they're going to want to encroach into the buffer to make it their back. And so how much of a buffer is it really going to be at that point in time if they start mowing it and cutting it down? We say we can enforce, and yes, it's part of the plan, but the reality is it's complaint driven. We might not know. So, okay. All right. Anyone else has any input about the buffer or anything else, else wise? I would only question whether anything that we're doing is changing the original site plan that we approved in the beginning. Jim, could you answer that, please? Or maybe Steve, whichever's. Well, I think it depends on how far back we want to go. Because keep in mind the, the, the history of the, the project. Um, it, it's evolved quite quite a bit since it was originally presented and, and approved. And um, we had the real estate uh, bubble burst and, and so on. So we've been through a number of, of changes for the project over, over the years. Well, actually, since the change, since the changes with the townhouses, it hasn't been any additional changes, has it? The last move was with the townhouses. Yeah, uh, correct. And, and, and when we did away with the the alleys, and, and right. we have not, to answer George's question directly, we have not made any changes to the to that layout since then. Haven't we went a little bit above board with putting the fence and the trees on them as they want it as it is? Haven't we done our job? I see our job been done. He has done our job. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't quite hear you clearly. With the fence that he's put up and the trees on the barrel property and all, oh, has okay. he done his job to on the 20 foot buffer? I see the 20 foot buffer as being done a little above board. Okay. I, I can agree if the rest of the commission feels the same way. I think that's reasonable. Okay. So, Thank you. Jim, back to you. Okay. Do we want to uh, try the conference call again? Yes. Yeah. Uh, who wants to raise their hand? Um, star five. We can't hear him. Okay. Hi, Mr. Thomas. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you guys hear now? Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yes. Go ahead. Good. Okay. Um, so I represent uh, the neighborhood surrounding the community, and I think that you're right in that the solution that you all propose does sort of represent the spirit of what the intentional vision is. And having said that, what I'd like you all to understand from a the public standpoint is that these rules, like about setbacks, are not supposed to be punitive or just rules. They represent um, the vision for your community. They support your comprehensive plan. So 
is not trying to rule that back or decide because they represent some vision that the town decides was good community living in terms of separating disparate uses of property in the bigger picture. So it's a little difficult when the rules just were laid or scrapped were not honored because from that perspective it doesn't really honor this larger vision. Um, it happened in Meads Crossing with the community village issues around density and the scrapping of the alleys, etc. I understand from other factors that perhaps dictated those change. So from from a from the public standpoint, I think what the commission needs to understand is it's very hard to participate in the process with the town when the rules are constantly changing. So from from our standpoint the vision the town has, you read the rules that support that vision, and then they disappear. It's very hard to participate to know uh, uh, what's going on there. So it's, it's a real struggle. Um, so I understand from Steve's perspective, I think you all are right that it's late in the game. Uh, most of the lots that do break that are in violation code are actually in phase two, which is what you're approving. So we're not talking about phase one anymore. So, so it's a little bit different question. You guys can make changes if you want because it's phase two that is up for this evening in terms of the changes you all want to see that are consistent with the vision that you have for your community. Um, so that's sort of this above. The second issue, which I'll be addressed, is that the extension of uh, Crimson Avenue into Angel Road and the overall hope for the rural community is, in general, is to minimize the impact of the development on the surrounding rural community. The buffers were one aspect of that request from us. The second was, how can we? Often the impact of this road connection to minimize traffic down Deal Road, for example, which is dirt, which Google Maps actually has as the shortest way to Westminster. Um, so that's also I'd like to hear some discussion about that, how we can work together. So that Steve is doing some things with the county to try and soften the requirements for the road improvements along Angel Road. And we are making a request that perhaps uh, Angel Road can be from the access point be one way and one way. Or as an experiment, I see somebody shaking their head, but, but it would be nice to know that you all are working towards this community-based vision for the community to work for us and for you all too to be able to soften this impact. So my proposal that uh, constituents have talked about is it possible as an experiment let's say for a year to make Angel Road one way back to 194 when with the road road improvements that Steve has suggested visually can help sort of steer people back towards 194 and to see what happens if it's a fiasco cause of accident we well, can revert back to regular traffic planning we're just now at the end of this line having seen in some ways very little response to our request. So it's just sort of one other place where we are trying to really um, soften this impact into this community that is um, going to take a lot of the brunt of this development on these ag boards. So I think they're the main two things that we've already sort of addressed the buffer issue. Um, so if there can be comments about the road, that we can work together on this in some way. With some changes there, that would be even better. If it's not possible, I understand there's a lot of safety issues, all sorts of things in the way. But if there's a will to do that in the bigger picture, to honor the bigger vision for your own comprehensive that you have in mind, to really be part of this community, the bigger community, and to Often these transitions, which is in writing in your own comprehensive, I really would 
um, ask you to reread that and look at what, what that calls for in spirit and see if we can figure out a solution that um, we can agree to. So that's it on my end, unless there are questions for me. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Uh, anyone have any comments or questions for Mr. Thomas? Yes. Judy? I couldn't really hear a lot of what he was saying. Um, that was kind of why I was shaking my head because I was only picking up like every four or five words. Um, I think when it comes to the road, um, the only problem I'm having that I know that it's been brought up about it being considered the shortest distance. You know, the shortest distance to my sister's house up in the north end of Westminster is back through those neighborhoods. I don't go that way because it's not faster. And I. Going to exist. We have a problem after the fact, then we can revisit that. But I think that it's kind of important to have, you know, a kind of a, a, an egress and ingress portion over off of Angel Road, and because it was already originally in the plan. Um, I don't see any reason to change that part. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about what else was mentioned, because like I said, I couldn't really hear. All right, well, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Does anyone else have any questions? If not, Jim, do we have a, any other callers waiting? We do not. All right, then let's move forward with this. Um, what else do you have for us about this, Jim, uh, before I? Uh, just to uh, just to reiterate that there are still a couple holes in the checklist. So I, I would suggest that um, if uh, if the commission is ready to uh, grant approval, that it be contingent upon, <clears throat> pardon me, upon receiving the 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 remaining approval letters from the, the couple agencies that we have not heard from yet. Okay. It, oh, Barry? Yeah, how many are we talking about, Jim? Excuse me. I, I said, how many, how many letters are we still talking about that we need? Okay. On the construction drawings, it's uh, just development review. Um, on the plats, the main one is just the uh, the health department is a signatory on those, and we haven't heard anything from the health department. That that's the that's the concern on on the plats is specifically the health department. We did get a letter from the health department about the construction drawing, though, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Okay. I thought I remember one. And and that's back to my point earlier with with most of the agencies having reviewed and approved the construction drawings, uh, it's very likely that with the exception of comments about this note should say X instead of Y or more um, administrative type comments like that, that the big picture of the plats, once the construction drawings are reviewed and meet everyone's approval, there's really no reason that the plats would would deviate from that. So it's really just more an administrative uh, okay. step that isn't done yet. Okay, with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion if you someone would like to make one. For contingency on the, uh, the, the letters from the other uh, agencies. You want a motion for to continue with with Phase two. A final, final approval a with continuing phase two. Receiving the rest of the letters from the other agencies. Right. So, so moved. Is that what you just made? Okay. Is there a second to I'll that? Second. Judy, that was that Judy? Second that? Okay. I'll second it. Okay, thanks. You're breaking up every now and then. Okay. Any other discussion on it on the motion? Yeah, I got one question, and it is now the time to make that question. Yeah. Is the swimming pool one all going in on this on this phase? Mr. Smith? I see it there. You held your hand up. That don't tell me not. I don't hear him. I can't hear you, Mr. Smith. Yeah. Uh, there we go. 
I was uh, seeking permission to speak. Uh, yes, there. Um, what we will do is um, when we have 225 lots sold, we'll start construction. So that gets us, and, and to put that in context, there's 209 in section one, but there's parts of section one, the townhouses, we'll have those longer. And we have more of those than we need right now. So it'll be a combination between the section one and section two lots. We are, as, um, as hopefully you all received in your package, we're in the pre preliminary design phase for the, the uh, clubhouse and pool. And if there are any comments there, we, we would also like to know if it's okay to you know, proceed based on what we've shared with you um, on that. And, and so we're moving through with, with uh, our necessary um, design and approvals now. I'd hate to see it go too far because I don't want to see another bridge. <laughs> We've got a lot of residents that uh, would that would be very upset if, if that bridge wasn't built. <laughs> so it's yeah. If it goes too far, it'll yeah. be scary. No, it's really just getting up to a. a, um, a I mean, we did the same thing with Carl Vista with the clubhouse and all, and yeah, we've got to do the same thing here, right? Yeah. Speaking we of, just, we just need to have a critical mass to you know, for it to succeed. And I guess the other part of this is is the connection to Fringer Road, right? Angel, 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 yeah. And I, I, you know, there again, I'd like to see that go both ways, not one way. Yep. Yes. All right. Any other comments? And I normally ask any comments from the floor, but I'll ask for any comments by phone. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, and the motion was made and second for final approval with con contingency on the letters from the agents that haven't submitted them yet. All those in favor of that motion signify with thumbs up. I got Ollie, I got George, I got Barry, Judy, and Jim, and myself. Nan, 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, Jim, can I, Mr. Smith, can I, uh, can, I, uh, can I get you to send me a text or an email on an, on a different subject? Excuse me. What was the question? So I, I just wanted to touch base with Mr. Smith uh, off thing about he's putting in a swimming pool. I want to talk to him a minute about some issues we've had at Carol Vista about swimming pools. Uh, I don't know if this is the place for that or not. Yeah, that's I just wanted to say that real quick before he got off. Um, I, 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 I'm I, I, sure I, his phone number off and you can you can ask that question outside of having on this meeting. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to do. I just want to let him know if you could Check with Jim Wyprick and get my phone number. Give me a call. I just want to share something with you about swimming pools and Carol. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it out on the air so we all have it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah Thank sure. you. <laughs> all right. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, next item, I guess we go to Jim with the your report. Okay. Uh, I guess shoot, I, it's too late now, but go ahead. I neglected to check with Cody. I normally ask if the county has any issues before I ask for the count of the motion, but sorry, Cody. <laughs> no worries. Okay. All righty. Um, well, the majority of my report this time was on, on Meads uh, and just an update, I guess, on the water and sewer master plan amendment. We've been working through that with, with county staff uh, at this point, we expect the amendment to be submitted to MDE in draft form uh, within the next couple days. Uh, we're refining the service area maps on both water and sewer. We've got a much better data-driven map than we've had in prior versions of the plan. So right now we are trying to hit the balance between getting the maps as accurate as we possibly can down to 
individual lots and things like that that are um, recorded, addressed, but don't have an existing water or sewer account on them. We're, we're trying to get things as accurate as we can on those without having to go back and revisit any of the tables or calculations in the in the rest of the chapter. So we should be finished up with that effort in the next day or so. And then the county will uh, forward the draft to MDE. And this all kind of is being driven at the pace it is with Tawny Town Crossing, uh, which you approved last meeting, having to really get moving and have building permits issued uh, and to close on the properties so that they don't lose their their funding and so on. So uh, Tawny Town Crossing is kind of the driver for trying to get this amendment through as, as quickly as we can. So uh, that is in the works and should be wrapped up in the next couple of days. Uh, it, new home construction has just been crazy. Uh, we've done 22 new homes this month. You may recall that for several years, we were averaging maybe 26 homes a year. So the pace has just been phenomenal uh, as far as the, the demand for, for the new homes. Uh, Meads is certainly the, the big driver there. Uh, Meadowbrook has been chipping away also, but at a much slower pace, but a pretty steady pace. So um, it's just been very busy on the zoning side, not just with new homes, but with other projects that individuals are doing with their properties in general. So very, very busy pace on the zoning front. And uh, that's really about it. Um, unless anybody has some questions I can try to field. Um, okay, hearing none, you go ahead with the, your projects. Okay. Well, uh, not a whole lot to update. Uh, we've been keeping CDM Smith very busy with the water and sewer amendment work. So we're really not seeing a lot move forward on the parks end, like with Bollinger Park. Um, so hopefully once we get this water and sewer amendment uh, submitted and MDE has approved it, we'll be able to shift focus with CDM Smith and get back onto some of our other uh, parks projects and other city capital improvement projects that have sort of been put on the back burner while we're focusing on the water and sewer stuff. Uh, we've already talked about Meads Crossing. Uh, the uh, grassroots cannabis facility is still contemplating if they want to. Currently, they have a number of large outdoor HVAC units and uh, large concrete slabs that these units sit on. Uh, they would like to get rid of the grass that's in between these slabs but they've had to go back to their engineer and determine if the stormwater management facilities on site will accommodate the additional impervious area. Uh, they've expressed an interest in pulling up the, the grass or the sod and just putting gravel down. Uh, I've advised that generally speaking, we would prefer a more permanent uh, pavement than gravel if they were going to do something like that. So right now, the ball's in their court as to whether they want to move forward with that or not. But otherwise, the uh, building improvements and other site improvements have just about been wrapped up. I don't believe they've, I don't know that they've received a use and occupancy for the full build out at this point, but they are getting very close. Um, Meadowbrook is continuing to chip away. The Marin Council did. Uh, release the surety for phase 4A uh, that has been accepted, been through the, the maintenance period, and so that is completely done now. 4B is, is approaching completion as well, uh, and they continue to pull permits for Section 5. Creekside, uh, the same basic stuff that's been kind of holding things up. There's still a, an easement uh, concerned with one homeowner regarding the wastewater pumping station on the site on their property. So we need to get that wrapped up and get their sign off on that one so that we can completely, so we can finish the close out of Creekside. And uh, that's about all that I've got really. Oh, um, 
Well, Tannery Barn, no, no real news since uh, since last time. Uh, they have started work on the pergola that we okayed last time, but that's about it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jim. Yep, Jay. Yeah, the large things that we've been dealing with, uh, again, deal with uh, what Jim is saying, Tony Town Crossing, and trying to get everything lined up that we needed to do. Uh, related to that in a much more general area has been time spent uh, dealing with the wastewater plant capacity management plan and related items, uh, which all have an effect on what you guys do. Um, the really preliminary stages of that, and I believe that Jim is going to be giving uh, probably monthly updates to the council at the council meetings of where we stand with that, because uh, that will deal with capacity and how we can approve new development, annexations, and things like that. So a lot of groundwork being laid again. All right, thank you. County update. Cody, do you have anything for us? Thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to um, update you guys again. Unfortunately, though, I don't have too much to update you on. Um, as Jim mentioned, uh, we have the water and sewer master plan um, kind of underway right now, and that should um, be fishing up here soon. Um, and the only other thing from a county perspective uh, that you should be aware of is that um, we are moving forward with our by request uh, comprehensive rezoning. Um, there is no uh, properties around the Tony Town area um, that you should be aware of, but in case uh, you are interested in um, watching that process, the Planning Commission uh, meeting on July 8th is when that process will get um, undergoing, but other than that, um, that's really all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, Go around, Ollie, if you have anything. Can't hear you. No, I'm good. Okay. George? No, nothing. Barry? Nothing for me. Judy? I guess that's no. Nothing for me as well. Okay. And Jim LaFaver? Nothing for me. All right. So I guess... Uh, Jim, how are we coming with City Hall? Slow but sure. Uh, the project is expected to be complete uh, first week in August. So we will probably not be moving furniture back downstairs from where it's stored right now in the council chambers for a while. But we also, of course, don't really have the ability in the council chamber to have the appropriate social distancing uh, for for all the people that that we would have um, and also to be able to live stream it at the same time so uh, we're kind of set up to be able to capture everyone at the council table but of course with that table filled we don't have six feet of separation so um, we could potentially explore other locations in a much bigger room but at this point I think we need to just plan on another virtual meeting Okay, thank you. And it looks like our next meeting then would be July 27th. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm not hearing anything else. So I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Ollie? Second. 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 All right. All those in favor of motion, signify saying with thumbs up. Good. Holly, George, Barry, everyone. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you, folks.